This is Maliki. Welcome to my channel, Voice of Maliki. Today I will discuss about immunology lecture six, phagocytosis. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So I have already discussed that phagocytic cells are actually component of second line of defense. Second line of defense destroys those pathogens. which have already entered our body who somehow crossed first line of defense our first line of defense fails to block their entry so neutrophil eosinophil mast cell monocytes macrophages and dendritic cells are phagocytic cells please remember all cells do not have capacity to undergo phagocytosis so these are the special cells that can perform phagocytosis these cells are also called phagocytes Okay so before starting phagocytosis we need to know when and why phagocytosis is required well we know that phagocytic cells wander everywhere in our body and these cells engulf and kill bacteria and other foreign particles and keep our blood our lymph our organ pathogen free so now question is how do they know the site of infection the exact site of infection it is not possible that always these cells will be present at the exact site of infection right so first thing is their recruitment towards the site of infection some alarming signals should be present to let them know about the infection yes and this signal is created and transported by the infected tissue where the pathogen actually attacks and this signal is in the form of some chemicals and those chemicals will be first secreted by the infected tissue and allowed phagocytic cells about the infection and then phagocytic cells would be drawn toward the area of infection so suppose this is the blood stream and some phagocytic cells these are some phagocytic cells they are moving through the blood and this is the tissue this is the tissue so here infection occurs this is the site this is the site of infection and when infection occurs this tissue will secrete some chemicals these are some chemicals these will be secreted by the tissue and those chemicals induce these phagocytic cells to enter at the site to enter at the infection site so is it clear now how phagocytic cells are recruited in the infection site well next stage is its action now phagocytic cells are at their war front next thing is they need to recognize their target as they are at the exact site it is easier for them to recognize their target so what do you think they will recognize the whole pathogen no it's not possible but some pathogens carry a specific receptor in their cell surface that is known as pams that is known as pams pams means pathogen associated molecular pattern so p a m p pam so some pathogens carry this pam uh, in their cell surface and this is the molecule that would be recognized by the phagocytic cells so pathogen associated molecular pattern is so called as these receptors are associated in the pathogen so they, they are pathogen associated because they are associated in the pathogen and they behave like an exact pattern it's a pattern pattern means a particular design and that design is well recognized by phagocytes 
but why only these receptors are recognized by phagocytes because phagocytic cells also contain a receptor in their cell membrane and that is prr that is prr prr is pattern recognition receptor so i forgot to mention this is the phagocyte and this is the pathogen so these phagocytes are containing this prr or pattern recognizing receptor right this is so named because these receptors can recognize that pattern that is associated with pathogen that is pam so prr can recognize pam they act like lock and key and fits exclusively with one another so the first step is done phagocytic cells have already recognized pathogen next step ingestion and formation of phagosome so now the intention of phagocytic cell is not to just recognize it but to kill those pathogens to do that these cells need to internalize the pathogen now how will it internalize the pathogen so it will extend its plasma membrane see this, this here is the extension extension of plasma membrane so the plasma membrane will be extended toward the microbe this is the microbe and plasma membrane is extended toward this microbe and it will surround it so it will surround this pathogen now the membrane surrounding the pathogen the thing the total thing that is membrane and pathogen it will just pinch off so the whole thing is now getting pinched off and the whole thing will be internalized into the cell so the thing is now internalized into the cell by forming a sac that is known as phagosome so now the sac is now formed sac is formed where the pathogen is internalized and it is surrounded by the part of plasma membrane so phagosome is containing the invading pathogen as well as phagocytic cell membrane so phagosome is now containing pathogen plus part of plasma membrane of phagocyte and it's just a sac next step formation of phagolysosome so the phagosome that is just formed so phagosome is just formed right and it will be fused with lysosome so this is lysosome and there will be the fusion between this lysosome and phagosome and after the fusion the whole stuff is now called phagolysosome so after the fusion it is the phagocyte phagolysosome where we have the phagosome and lysosome and why phagolysosome because it contains phagosome and lysosome so phagolysosome is now formed now next step is destruction of pathogen and formation of residual bodies so phagosome is phagolysosome is now formed right phagolysosome is formed now lysosome contains huge number of digestive enzymes so lysosome contains huge number of digestive enzymes and microbicidal substances those are lysozyme nucleus protease lipase hydrogen hydrogen peroxide or h2o2 so each of them works differently to kill the pathogen in addition to this phagolysosome has acidic environment 
it has acidic environment so that it can also help to destroy bacteria once the engulfed microbes are killed and destroyed some indigestible materials remain in the phagolysosome so some indigestible materials those are now in the phagolysosome and now this sac is called as residual body so residual body is nothing but a sac containing some indigestible materials and this sac is now formed it is residual body and the next step is exocytosis so residual bodies are now formed we have seen and these residual bodies will move toward the cell membrane they are moving toward the cell membrane and discharges its contents outside the cell so this process is known as exocytosis but what happens to them those are digested properly so the digested fragments of the pathogen has a distinct path you will know that in my future lecture so stay connected with me bye bye